This week, I'll be reviewing Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. Let's just get this out of the way real fast. Ubisoft deserves a round of applause. Why? Because you know they could have sold this game for like $30, but they released it for $10. So for that kind of restraint, I think they've earned a pat on the back at the very least. This entry into the Assassin's Creed mythos deviates from the usual formula by being a more linear 2.5D side-scroller versus a 3D sandbox to assassin around in. Now, I haven't really cared about the franchise since the second one, but when did we drop the whole Animus thing? Are we still Desmond? Y you know what, it doesn't even matter. Plot is pretty simple as far as a platformer can go, you're a ninja who is after revenge because your brotherhood got killed off. Pretty straightforward. Only for some reason I'm after some box also. And this box is important because of reasons. I beat the game, but I never explained what the big deal about the box was. Oh well, it's probably some Doomsday McGuffin. I have a question for everyone else watching this who may have played Chronicles already. Did any of you notice significant frame skips in your playthroughs? Now, my computer isn't exactly top of the line. I'm using a basic HP I got from Best Buy that a friend of mine stuck a newer video card in. I'm able to run several other current gen games flawlessly and without interruption, yet this game stutters regularly. Now, if this is in fact an issue with my computer, well then, fair enough. If it's something on Ubisoft's end, I can only hope it gets patched out soon. The game isn't unplayable, but it's irritating when I'm trying to run towards a ledge and jump off, and the frame skips so much I end up alerting a guard instead. There's another weird thing in this game. I understand why for game development reasons you'd keep certain skills and such from the player early on. What I don't get is why you'd reveal these powers to us through a flashback to training days. It makes me think this main character has amnesia or something. It's the only way I can explain how Xiao Jun for the first four levels doesn't know how to jump on someone and stab them simultaneously, but suddenly remembers how to do so on level 5. It really is a minor complaint, I just wish Ubisoft gave us a better way of explaining our character's skill progression rather than, oh yeah, I can slide and stab. As far as the actual gameplay, it's pretty good. Ubisoft has done a really good job letting you know when you are and are not visible and when you can and cannot make an assassination attack. My only real gripe comes from the combat. Now, I can understand why it is the way it is. We're supposed to be assassins and do everything from the shadows. If we get spotted, then by all intents and purposes, we've lost. Making it intentionally difficult is punishment for being caught. But I want to bring up another game that plays like Chronicles but much better, Mark of the Ninja. With Mark of the Ninja, if you got caught, you were in a similarly perilous situation. The major difference is when I was in a bad situation, it was still fun to play. This one isn't. If I get into a melee fight in Chronicles, I have to suffer through an irritating and slow paced combat system, whereas in Mark of the Ninja, I may still be at a disadvantage, but by making the gameplay faster, it was still fun to go through. Movement options are another thing Mark of the Ninja has over Chronicles. In Mark of the Ninja, I could do everything Chronicles lets me do, but I had an additional grappling hook and freedom to use the teleport move whenever I wanted. This limitation of the movement from Chronicles honestly wouldn't bother me so much if I hadn't played Mark of the Ninja first. When Chronicles gives you a teleport move, you have to be hiding already, and all it lets you do is travel unseen to the next hiding place. When Mark of the Ninja gives you a teleport move, you can use it whenever and wherever you want. When Chronicles gives you a grappling hook device, your only use for it in terms of mobility is to climb up to the ceiling. When Mark of the Ninja gives you a grappling hook, you get to swing around like Spider-Man. One's just more fun than the other. Now, don't get the wrong idea, folks. Just because this game isn't as good as Mark of the Ninja doesn't make it bad. In fact, I'd argue this is one of the better games in the Assassin's Creed franchise because it isn't mucking itself up with building a dream home or micromanaging your Assassin's Club roster. It's straight to the point and lets your full game be about being an assassin. It's $10 on Steam, and I'd say well worth it.